So if you have an Ender 3 V3 KE and you want to tune the PID to stop that annoying banding you're experiencing, but you've realized that for some ungodly reason, Creality hasn't actually included a PID auto-tune feature in one of their latest and greatest 3D printers. So here's a way that I figured out how to calibrate your PID. Step one, go to the settings on your printer and enable root control. It gives you a warning message, but don't worry, your printer is gonna be better than ever with the new features you're about to get. Once root has been enabled, copy the username and password and head over to your PC. So the next step is to get the IP address from your printer, which can be found on Creality Print. Copy that bad boy and then open up PuTTY. So PuTTY is a way to connect to your printer via SSH and it's free. I'll leave a link to the program in the description. Once it's installed, all you have to do is paste your IP address and press open. Okay, so now you're gonna be given a command terminal like this. And all you have to do is enter in the details that you got on your printer. So that was root and then the password was Creality2023. Now you can see that we have access to the machine via SSH using PuTTY. And we can begin with installing the software. All right, so I'll leave a link for this website in the description. Um, but basically all you need to do is make sure that your machine is fully up to date. Otherwise you risk bricking your machine. So don't do that. <laughs> So once you've confirmed the firmware, all you have to do is copy a couple of lines of code and you'll be good to go. But before we start copying code, we need to select the right directory. So we type in CD, which is choose directory, slash USR, which is user, slash data. And now we will be in that folder. After we're in the correct folder, then we go down to this line of code, copy it, and then paste and then hit enter you're gonna wait for a few moments for the software to download so once that has downloaded we want to install it so the next line of code you need to use is this one right here so copy and then paste and then enter and wham bam thank you ma'am now this is an installer script that makes installing um, any of the custom firmware that you want super duper duper easy. So we want to hit uh, one for install. And then the first thing that we want to install is Moonraker and Nginx. Okay, so we hit one again and then yes. So these are some of the prerequisite files that you'll need to be able to run um, either Fluid or Mainsail or whichever interface that you want to use. So now we have Moonraker and Nginx. <laughs> Nginx, Nginx. I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong, but oh well. Now for this, I'm going to be using Mainsail. That's just my preference, but you can also use Fluid if you like. So I'm going to hit three. Yes. And then for the final piece of software I'm going to be installing is Antware. Now you can go through and install a whole bunch of other extra settings that you want, um, including camera support, Octo Everywhere, etc, etc. But for the sake of the tutorial, I think we're okay for now. We'll move on to the next step. So we can exit out of PuTTY and now we're going to be going to the IP address of the printer. But instead of using the main IP, we're going to be using our brand new IP with main cell installed. Now the time has come to tune your PID. But there's a few things you need to do before you actually start the tune. First thing is that you need to wait for your printer to reach room temperature. Next, you need to auto home your printer so that the print head is sitting in the middle of the bed and is about five centimeters off the build plate. So the next thing you need to do is either enable or disable your fan, depending on what you're gonna be printing most of. So if you're gonna be printing PLA, you wanna put it to 100%. If you're printing ABS, maybe put it on 20 or 30. So we can turn the fan on a few different ways. The first one is using Creality Print. You just click on or off. The next way is just by going down here and dragging the fan on through the main cell interface. The third way is by using a command and that is M106S255. And that will turn the fan on 100%. Now we're going to be doing the tune for the build plate first because there's going to be an ambient temperature that that build plate does give off and uh, that temperature is something that we will need when we are calibrating the extruder. 
So this is the command that you're gonna be using to activate the PID tune for the bed. Now, here's where temperatures get a little bit tricky. Which temperature should you use? Now, the general rule of thumb is to tune your PID for the filament you're gonna be printing with the most. But for those of us who print with multiple different types of filament, you should tune it to what the average temperature between these filaments is. So if you're printing PLA and ABS, then I would set the bed tune to around 70 degrees Celsius and the hot end to around 240. So let's start the bed with a target of 70 degrees. Okay, so you can see that the bed has finished its tune. So now all we have to do is type save underscore config. And uh, once I press enter, this is going to restart the machine, but it's always a good idea just to double check that the settings have been updated. So let's hit enter. And then I'm just going to copy these into a Word document just to make sure that they have been updated. So the way for us to check that is to go into machine all the way to the end, open printer.config. And now we should see that the heater bed has been commented out. Um, so these were the default settings. Um, and now the printer is going to be using these settings right here. So the KP reads 69.373. 69.373 pretty good to me so that has updated successfully so now what we're going to do is set that bed back to 70 degrees which is the temperature that we the auto tune with wait for that bed to get there and then we're going to be doing the tune for the hot end so we're going to be changing heater bed to extruder extruder i like that and I'm going to be putting the temperature here to, mm, let's see, I'm going to be doing 220 because I'm going to be doing the two plastics that I'm going to be primarily printing with is uh, PLA, which I'm printing at 220, and PETG, which I'm printing at 235. So I think 220 is going to be pretty damn good. Okay, so it looks like the heat bed has reached uh, its desired temperature. Let's begin the calibration. Okay, so once that is done, you just type in save config again, restart the machine, and then double check to make sure that those values have been entered in correctly. Same thing as before. So I've since put in the two target temperatures, 220 and 70 degrees, just to check that everything is working properly. And it looks to be pretty good. Now, uh, with clipper-based machines, you're gonna find a little bit of variation, uh, especially for the hot end, um, because it's just not as accurate as Marlin. Um, now, I don't know if that's just my machine, and it, or if it's just my problem, or if it's consistent with other clipper machines, but here's a clip of my Ender 3 SE that runs Marlin and is PID tuned through Marlin, and you can see that the temperature is just spot on. It doesn't move, it doesn't fluctuate, it's just perfect. And no matter what I do on the KE, I just can't get that number to stop fluctuating. Um, generally, it's going to fluctuate 0 0.1 to 0 0.3 of a degree. So uh, I don't know if this is normal or if it's just me or if it's just something we have to deal with until Clipper updates their, um, their side of things with PID tuning. But yeah, it is a little bit noticeable on prints because it is kind of wavy form it does it does it goes up and down up and down up and down consistently um but it's not super bad it could be worse so there you go hopefully this has been informative i'm gonna catch you around like a wrist i'll see you in the next video